Hey everybody, thanks for watching A Guy Doing Stuff. I'm Adam and today I'm going to be attaching the head plate and shaping the headstock. I'm going to be using this piece of Ziri Cote for the head plate because I wanted it to match the back and the sides of the guitar. I'm also going to be throwing in a maple veneer underneath it just to add a little extra fancy touch. The first step for this is to glue these onto the neck blank. I clamp them down where I want them without glue. There's a large area around the outside I'm going to cut off as scrap anyways. I'm going to drill a couple small holes where the scrap is going to be, then unclamp everything, apply glue to the surfaces, and when I go back to clamp them down with glue, I put these nails in my holes to realign the plate and the veneer back to where I had them earlier. I use this piece of particle board as a coal just to make sure even pressure is applied everywhere. I'll be using this nail alignment technique for a couple other things in the guitar building process. It's really useful for when you wanna clamp something down without it sliding all over the place because glue kinda of acts as a lubricant. You are gonna to wanna to pull the nails out after you get it clamped down because you don't want the glue drying with the nails still in there. While I wait for this to dry, I'm gonna make a template for the headstock. I cut it off my plans, glue it to a piece of particle board, and cut the shape of it on a bandsaw. My bandsaw doesn't give a super clean cut, so I cut it a little bit over the actual shape and then sand it down to the final shape with a sanding block. I also cut a wedge off the base like this because I'm going to have to fit it on the back of the neck blank later. I let it sit like this overnight, so I'm going to go ahead and unclamp it now. This is a jig for cutting the head plate square to the neck. It's just a piece of particle board with a stopper screwed on right here and a relief right it out right here. The stopper bears against the side of the neck here and the head plate tucks into the relief so I can use this edge here as a square fence to cut the base of the head plate. I line it up to cut at where the headstock angles down, clamp it down, and then make the cut with a pull saw. My plans say to make the headstock six and a half inches long, so I measure that on the face, then trace it onto the back, then mark a line down the center. I put double-sided tape on the template and lined it up with the marks I made on the back of the headstock. Now I'm gonna cut around the headstock, then use a flush cut router bit on the router table to mimic the shape of the template exactly. Be careful when you do this to cut in the directions that avoid tear out as best as you can. I'm gonna go ahead and drill the holes for my tuning machines too right now. I just marked the measurements from the plans and drilled them with a 3 8 inch bit. So I was just editing some of the footage from this video and I know I've said this before but I think I make this look a lot easier than it actually is. In processes like this, every fraction of a hair of a measurement that you're off is going to affect a lot of things down the line when you're working on getting the final setup so you want to make sure everything is really really exact that you're doing. If you want to see a more detailed version of this process, Eric Schaefer Guitars, um, I used his videos to learn how to do this. I'm going to link to his videos in my video description, but he has a really, um, he has like three videos that show that all everything I did in this video in a really detailed way. His whole series is really really good. I definitely recommend checking him out. So thank you Eric Schaefer Guitars. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you to Worksharp Tools for sponsoring this series. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section, and don't forget to hit subscribe.